Yeah, welcome in. We're going to be doing episode two of Ripples in the Veil. Last episode, uh, we had a group of heroes meet Medusa and and team up to thwart uh, a, a, a snake cult that was uh, trying to give rise to the Night Serpent on uh, the most... Um, uh, what would be the word, I guess? Comically convenient <laughs> day of St. Patrick's Day. Um, today, we rejoin uh, in the city of Chicago. Uh, it is nearing Easter weekend. Uh, and for some reason, uh, winter has still uh so has its clutches in the life of spring and where snow should be melting it's still building and where uh the trees should be sprouting and the flowers blooming uh they are still dead and wilted the uh the natural balance is obviously off we follow uh, a, a, a windswept newspaper um, up, up to the north side of Chicago uh, that reads, uh, my notes are in a different tab. <laughs> um, I swear it reads something. Uh, it no, <laughs> uh, no. It, it just it, the the headline reads about um, the the snowfall and the amount of snowfall that's to occur on Easter Sunday. Uh, as we follow this uh, this newspaper, we come to the front door of a uh, a um, an investigator's office, a private eye. Um, the inside, um, we see, uh, someone that we recognize from the first episode, actually, uh, um, an older, seemingly like middle-aged man in, uh, in a, just a, uh, like a little undone white button-up suspenders and uh, his coat is hanging off to his side and we see a halo floating around his head. This is uh, Cassiel, one of the angels that was investigating the uh, club on the south side in the first episode. Uh, and he's reading a copy of this newspaper that we've seen outside. The door opens and we see D come in. D, do you mind describing your character? Um, D is fairly tall. She has, um, dark, flowing black hair, and she has topaz eyes, and she's just dressed like you would think of a detective, got a trench coat, just, you know, shirt pants, got knee-high boots, and she just walks with authority because that's just how she is. Right on. Um, so you you uh, burst into your to your office, your shared office with uh, your father, Cass. Um, he goes, "Hey, D, welcome in there. Uh, you you seen this crap about the weather? Can you believe how much snow there is outside?" No, it's absolutely. First, that mess with the snakes. You know, by the time St. Patrick's Day rides around, we're supposed to all be in shorts now. Look at me, I got pants and a full shirt on. Ain't right, ain't right. No, I want to get out of this outfit. I hate cold. I want to be warm. Well, hey, uh, I got a, I got another uh, investigator down. Gonna, gonna come and. Uh, uh, join us on something. Uh, there's something going on at the, the museum downtown, I guess, today. Have you heard anything about this? Not today. haven't checked my phone or anything lately. I was actually eating lunch and enjoying it. 
Yeah, well, I don't know. There's some kind of exchange. Some guy down there. Uh, I don't know. I, I, uh, it's about all I get. We just got a time. We got a. We got a man. We got a bag. We got the museum. So uh, we're just we're just kind of waiting for. It. And at that moment, the door poof, slams open, and we see Medusa walk through. Um, Medusa is uh, adorned in her her biker leather with like metal studs and the like, and her snake hair is um, put up and kept back. Um, mostly out of the prying eyes. Um, uh, how would you like to introduce yourself as you as you come in, Medusa? I come in and I'm shaking like all the snow off and just kind of softly swearing to myself the entire time because this is frankly bull hockey. It is uh, this shouldn't be happening. This is nuts. I'm unhappy with the whole scenario, and so I'm just like shaking myself and I just kind of look up and see the two of them and go. Hi. Detectives, and, right? Yeah, Medusa, thanks for coming in. Appreciate you. Uh, now, this is my daughter, D. D, this is Medusa. Now, D, you know, ever since the uh, snake cult incident uh, during St. Patrick's Day, that you and Medusa, uh, as well as her, um, as her, like, sisterhood of Gorgons, have been under close watch because of their snake-like appearance abilities and 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 things like that and you yourself have actually been under watch even though you're the daughter of an angel which is why most people haven't investigated you but you do have a giant snake tattoo wrapped around a solar disc on your chest um so there have been people that kind of eyeball you weird and uh so in in that moment you you kind of realize like i've heard weird stuff about you and medusa you kind of hear the same you're like I've heard weird stuff about you. Yay for being weirdos, right? Yeah, weirdos. <laughs> also, profiling because of snakes is wrong. Profiling yeah. is wrong. I I don't want any snake talk in my office, please. Like, no offense, Medusa, but hey, it's just you know, uh, it, we've uh, had some weird close encounters. Uh, our, mm. you know, it's been, you, I put this office together, my name's on the deed, I'm the one who has the, the sign out front, I, I, it's technically your office too, I guess, uh, so, listen, I just need you to go down to the museum, I need you to keep an eye out for this guy, uh, trench coat, uh, brown, a uh, tall, white male, uh, clean-shaven kind of guy. Maybe five o'clock shadow, uh, carrying some kind of weird bag. Okay, sounds suspicious. That's why we're checking it out. Always the weird stuff. It's always the weird stuff that comes my way. And it's all been weird in the family, so that's not. Fair enough. Well, on Z, let's go. Uh, all right, so uh, you head off uh, into the cold, uh, cold, wintry April <laughs> and uh, head downtown Chicago. We go to uh, the Art and History Museum of Chicago, downtown, in Millennium Park, where it would usually be surrounded by beautiful greenery and tourists outside uh, taking pictures at the, the metallic bean that's in the middle of the park. Uh, instead, it's, it's fairly empty, people avoiding icy uh, sidewalks, and, uh, and, and actually the skating rink is even still open downtown outside. Uh, <clears throat> Inside the museum, we uh, see a, a man eyeing, or well, we see a figure eyeing a portrait. Uh, this is an alien. An alien. Would you like to describe your current appearance and uh, tell us about the art you're looking at, like why you selected it? So the man you're seeing is a man past his prime. You see short cropped black hair glasses that don't fit the face too well, steel gray eyes, and on his beard you can see the spots of gray hair slowly shining through. 
and well, he simply stares at a landscape painting, sort of with concern, as depicted is a lush green valley, whereas outside right now there is nothing but snow. All right. Um, I need you to roll me a perception check, please. Perception. Okay. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Uh, starting fair enough. Strong. Just like last night. All right. There we oh, go. Oh boy. Roll. Let's do it. <laughs> um, starting off strong. You find yourself lost in the painting, right? You're you're this seemingly whimsical, magical view of the world that you're wishing for, um, even though you yourself are like a magical entity. Uh, still can't grasp that thing, and, and you're missing it. You're missing that balance. You're feeling very off today. Um, let's join Damon. As uh, Anelian stares into the landscape portrait, uh, we pan across the room into a, uh, a Frank Lloyd Wright exhibit and push in past some beautiful architecture uh, and toward a, a big structure in the middle. Um, and, and around it are several different benches. And one of the benches, there is uh, a man seated with uh, a lump next to him, uh, a big satchel. This is Damon. Damon, you want to describe yourself a little bit? Yeah. Uh, Damon is a middle-aged man with uh, dark black slick hair with a little bit of uh, gray streaking through, mostly a patch on the right. Um, he has dark green eyes. Uh, he's wearing this slightly rugged black suit jacket, uh, black slacks matching, um, with a nice shirt and tie that seem to be underneath. Um, he's got a pretty clean trimmed face, a little bit of, as mentioned, a five o'clock shadow, uh, with a large faded scar that seems to go from the top to just right underneath, uh, his, um, uh, right eye. Um, he holds himself in a kind of stiff, proper position with a stern face and seems to be scanning through the crowd around him. So, this bag that you're holding on to? Uh, it was given to you uh, through another deal uh, a few weeks ago, and you've been holding on to it. Uh, instructed to meet here at this place with someone specific looking for it. Um, you were told not to look inside. Did you? No. Um, okay. Okay. So, uh, we rejoin, um, Anelian, who looks over their shoulder, uh, and finally breaking free of the, the trance that this portrait has them pulled into, uh, you notice two figures enter, Medusa and some sort of pi looking person like they are the you know like quintessential looking like oh that person's trying to like be undercover but you know obviously they're undercover kind of person right um <clears throat> and you see these two enter uh across the room and uh are are uh um you know just working their way about the room um uh, medusa and d could you give me um stealth checks or performance checks whichever is best for you um, Medusa, you can use your uh, intelligence or wisdom, whichever's higher there. Or, uh, sorry, wisdom or charisma, whichever's higher there. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember how to do this site. <laughs> oh, right, we're running it through the site. If you can just yeah. click on the stat, I think you can just do like a stat roll. Yeah. I don't even know what that means. Uh, uh, the ability see. scores, like the strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, charisma. 
Oh, okay. You should be able to click on one of those and get a roll out of it, I believe. Okay. Um... Work? Uh, wisdom or charisma, whichever is higher. And then D also, please give me a um, stealth or performance check. My wisdom and charisma. I'm sorry, did you ask something? Yeah, I said my wisdom and charisma are the same score number. Should I just choose one or the other? Oh, yeah, for you, you roll uh, um, <laughs> performance or stealth, whichever. Choose one of those two to roll for you. Snips is having to roll things a little bit differently, so I'm having to deal things out a little differently. I'm a monster! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you should uh, be able to just click the text in the um... in your skills. Okay, we figured out where to roll. <laughs> Sorry, we also we are uh, we're all learning this, or a few of us are learning this as we go too. Are you trying to find on the uh, uh, D and D Beyond page where it shows the the rolls, or for um, yeah? Uh, it should be in the middle of the sheet. You'll see a section that says like acrobatics, animal handling, arcane. You should see one in there that's either stealth or performance. They're near the bottom. You just click the uh, the number that's to the right of it. Hey. Awesome. Did it do it? There we go. Yeah, so if you look in roll 20, it, it, it rolled it for you when you click that. And it, it rolled all those oh. wisdoms, too. So it was working. It just... <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, over Nellian's shoulder across the room, we see Medusa and D enter the room. Um, uh, Medusa seems a little on edge. Um, not sure if it's the just the 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 strange uh, looks and and treatment that she's been getting f over the past uh, month or so, or or if it's just the atmosphere, but. Um, something has her on edge, but D is blending in so well um, that your first glance at like, oh, look at that person undercover. Like she kind of disappears and you're like, oh, well, maybe they weren't together. Um, and you kind of just notice Medusa uh, walking across the room. Would you like to do anything? Would you like to approach them in any way? Um, an alien will just take off his glasses and pretend to clean them. And just sort of try to himself blend in into the crowd as an observer. Okay, uh, go ahead and roll me a stealth or per uh, performance check. Okay, nice. Um, I just realized that other one was a perception, not performance, but it's okay. <laughs> that's all right um so uh yeah you you take off your glasses and 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 just meld into the crowd your uh your changeling abilities combined with the the uh glamour provided by the veil you're just almost invisible right now um we return to damon on the bench um You're approached by someone in a, a hoodie, um, and they're they've got like a big baggy hoodie, and 
Uh, it's got some like big gym name written across the back of it and uh, some like weird monster face on the front of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the beggar was giving us some good, some good role play there. Um, so uh, and he says, you know, hands in pockets, uh, hood pulled down. I believe you have something of mine. Seems like it. Uh, roll me a perception check. Ah, one second. I think I've had an issue. That's the wrong one. I gotta work. <laughs> I'm getting there. There we go. All right. Oh damn! All right. Um, as he uh, as he says this, and you respond in kind, he uh, reaches a hand out, and his hand is beautifully manicured um he has like bronze golden skin and the other other side is um this this uh, a nice like i don't know it's like ivory pale skin color just every bit of it is beautiful the nails are filed and everything um and as he reaches a, a small lock of tightly curled golden hair uh falls from under the hood um and he he puts a hand on the bag I believe this will put us squared away, right? As long as everything's still there. A job's a job. I do as I am asked. And he will kind of push the bag towards him. Then this is the last you'll be seeing of me. Uh, and he pulls the bag up into his lap. Um, and, and sits there for a moment. Uh, let's go to Inelian and Medusa D. The three of you are uh, kind of here for the same reasons, right? So uh, you notice um, the man with the bag and the Frank Lloyd Wright exhibit. Um, you've, you've made your way over there. Um, and you notice there's a man that has sat down beside him and um, seems to be uh, talking to him about this bag. Okay. Like, Dia's disappeared. I can't see her at all, right? I mean, you came together. You're, like... you're able to keep eyes on each other. You know? Okay. Yeah. Because I'm the like, one being super obvious. Yeah. <laughs> I just move over since I'm pretty much hidden I just kind of get closer and observe them would you like to try to like listen in or um, you want to try to get a peek at anybody there I'm just going to listen just going to listen okay uh, give me a perception check Oh man! Uh, like at the moment you you get yourself in place, you've actually found one of those strange like listening walls where you can whisper at one end and you you can hear it at the other, no matter how far away it is. And you're like, I think I've I've found the exact spot. And you're like listening to the first part of the conversation, and then like a group of grade schoolers go like and like run in and are like banging on the wall and like oh go down there go down there 
butts and farts and butts and farts <laughs> and like are just like completely uh in your way while you've been trying to listen into this conversation to bully you over um <laughs> um and i just face palm and i'm like ah oh, children <laughs> uh and Elian, uh, you you see this like group of kids uh, swarm the far wall on the other side of your target, and and this this exchange that's happening in the middle of the exhibit. Um, the uh, the 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 figure on that's entered the new figure um, that seems to be taking the bag has now has now moved in a little bit closer. The hand is on the bag, um, and there seems to be some sort of uh, tight exchange going on. Are you interested in intervening in any way? So I I followed Medusa in, right? Like, I'm, I'm still keeping an eye on Medusa, and I mean, can I sort of tell that she too is watching this exchange? Yeah, her uh, her role was low enough earlier. I think you, you can tell that she's on a edge, and you can catch some looks going... Um, over to this guy, you know, in the middle of the room with the bag. So as, I guess, Medusa's circling the exchange, Inelion would be the third layer of that, sort of also watching the greater exchange of what is going down between Medusa and this exchange then. Sure. Okay, so you, you're kind of watching the, the bigger picture, as it were, than it is the actual, yeah. the initial thing, yeah. Being being a person that's interested in information and trading those that, that information, that makes more sense. You're like, ooh, let me back up and see what else is happening. Um, so, Medusa, uh, we join you. There's a, the, you, the, the, your target is, is sat on a bench. There's a man that has leaned over, grabbed a bag, um, and and has leaned over, and they seem to be finishing some sort of uh, exchange between the two of them. Okay. Well, they obviously have noticed me because I wasn't sneaky at all. Um, but the least I can do is maybe run distraction for D, so she can try to get a little bit closer. Okay, right on. So, what would you like to? So, uh, yeah. So I like I turn and I kind of like shift my body a little bit to where I'm looking, kind of looking at one of the exhibit pieces, and I'm just like, oh my god, Frankie was the best. You guys cannot believe just how brilliant this man was. Oh my god, and I'm just like fangirling real hard and like sneaking glances at D, kind of like, all right, bud, <laughs> this is all you get. <laughs> so, get while it's good, and I'm like just shouting at anyone around me. I'm looking at the little kids. I'm like, you kids don't have any respect these days for good architects. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm just being the most obnoxious person at, in this entire museum. Do you mind? And while uh, is doing that, I oh. get closer and um, just try to keep listening over the little things at my feet. <laughs> The sudden spawn that's appeared. Uh, uh, Medusa, go ahead and roll me a performance check for your fangirling. Okay. Uh, which one would I hit for that? That'd be charisma, right? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Not too bad, eh? All right, all right. Yeah, so you're you you end up pulling over some like some just uh the worst like college students that are just like this is my life. I breathe, eat, sleep. Frank Lloyd Wright, you know, like and they and they're just on this tour from another country they've come from to explore the home of Frank Lloyd Wright and and you've 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 just gathered up this group of people and one of them is connected to that group of kids up against the wall and is like get over here Johnny and like grabs him and like can get get Becky away from that and um it starts trying to pull them over to you as you're like um you know just speaking gospel of Frank Lloyd Wright here um <laughs> um and I say, yeah, I D. Myself, thank the world that they are gone. 
<laughs> yeah, the kids are being um, like corralled away from your feet. Um, and, and as you begin to listen back in, uh, you begin the, the, you hear the final exchange of this and, um, it goes to the tune of, um, like, as long as everything is there, you won't be seeing me again. Um, and you, you hear the, the last words of, you know, I, then this will be the last of me. Uh, and... Of all the prep I did, I didn't grab my dice. Give me one moment. I'll be right back. No! Not <laughs> having dice. Shame! Shame. And they all just be attached to the desk 24 7. Mine are right beside me, and I don't even use them. <laughs> I always have them within grabbing distance. <laughs> I have a birthday die. Oh. Lucky one. She rolls so pretty. But no, <laughs> I have to use the computer. Now. I had a set of dice that were a beautiful, like, metal, nice set. And they just rolled too bad too many times. It's like, all right, you guys have to hide in the corner. You're banished. You're banished. Dice jail. Dice yeah. jail. Oh, gosh. I don't think I've brought them back out yet. I think they're still learning their lesson. <laughs> Ooh, those are pretty. They are very pretty. I love them. Uh, welcome back from the break. <laughs> the intended ad break. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, while I'm, while I've kind of already broke up the session... Thanks, everybody, for, like, the subs and everybody being here and hanging out tonight. It's freaking awesome. Okay. Um, back to Damon. Um... You notice that there are some figures closing in on you. Um, roll me a perception check. Let's see, or yeah, perception or insight. Let's see which way you're leaning, um, and and see if I can get you some more information about what's happening here. Oh my lanta! I see everything. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, you you notice this person uh, as they get up and walk away, um, they they have bare feet. The person that's leaving you, the man, the person in the hoodie with the bag, um, and you begin to spot these figures around you um, closing in. They're they're obviously looking at you. You've got three around you um, that that seem to be eyeing you and interested in, in what you're doing. Um, and as far as I'm aware, nobody's making a move. But um, you are kind of left alone in a, in a strange, tense moment as the person walks away with their like of their like <laughs> naked feet, <laughs> slap squish um, on the floor. Okay. Seeing people eye me up. Um, let's see. I'm going to um, slowly, after like a pause, get up and begin to kind of try to flow with the traffic. Okay. Um, and try to find a make my way to an exit, but keeping like um, out of my peripheral vision just to kind of keep an angle on what's going on sure um roll me a stealth check as you move and weave your way through the people 
and make your way away from the bench and out of here. Nice. Okay. Hey, DM. Yeah, what's up? Um, while this is all happening, can I... I notice while I have gathered this huge crowd, like, around this piece, and they're very focused on this piece now, um, is there any way I can, like, slip away and follow the guy who took the bag? Um, I'll come back to you in a moment. Okay? Okay. Um... Uh, well, actually, at that moment, <laughs> not a bad, not a bad time to do that. Actually, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, you hear uh, some commotion behind you, um, and the there's a there's a group of people behind you, and you see somebody burst through. Um, so let's change over to uh, Medusa. Medusa, you are interested in um, following the person with the bag, right? Yeah. Okay, so you uh, look up and see a person that has uh, taken this bag and is moving toward the far side of the room. Um, they are at a, a quicker pace and seem to be like moving toward the door. They're obviously trying to get out of here, right? So what would you like to do? Um, I'd like to kind of follow the wall and like go in between people and like try to make my way behind him without being as as obvious and in the open. But I'd like to do like a bit of a more brisk walk, not as not running, not jogging, just like trying to keep up with him without being so close. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you actually see it at one point he like stumbles past some people um, and and ends up making himself pretty clearly known to you and you're able to keep following him um he uh ends up heading down a grand set of stairs and into a a, a foyer that is uh, or a foyer that is heading um toward the exit of the building out of the would museum. i also be able to follow them yeah you see medusa moving after the man with the bag Okay, then you, for just a moment, you see, like, one person pass by, another person pass by, and then suddenly this man past this prime is gone. And instead, a moment later, you see a small child pushing its way to the through the crowd and uh, following the two of them. Okay. Um... Well, while they're doing that, can, would I be able to still see the person that was sitting there that gave the other person the bag? And I can kind of check them out, or are they gone? Sure, you could you could move toward them. Um, it seems like they're taking a moment where they're they've kept to themselves, uh, maybe observing the art piece or something. Um, yeah, if you'd like to move up to them, you're you're free to do so. Uh, how would you like to go about that? Would you like to uh, call them out? Would you like to? Um, what I'll probably do is just you know walk up beside them. And I'm also observing what they're looking at and just kind of start a normal conversation about the art piece, you know, just to, you know, not seem so oblivious, so obvious of why I'm there. Yeah. Um, so you approach this figure on the, the bench <clears throat> and you, you appear to be taking in the art and um uh, observing the the plaque that's there with all the you know written dates and information about the sculpture you're looking at um and you look down and see a pair of hands trembling they're thin frail um most likely female hands um, as you as you follow the hands to the body, there's a, 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 a college age woman that seems to be with this big group in um, a uh, in a in a brown trench coat um, and like a, a little like stocking hat over, um, and she looks up at you and she's like, "Help! He took my purse! Please!" Um, and you realize that this may not 
beer mark, in fact. Um, but you may be in pursuit of someone that has caused some trouble here. We cut to um, uh, Law, back to Damon. Um, Damon, you've... Uh, it is hours later. Um, and you uh, did that exchange this morning. You've uh, gone back home. You are visiting with your kids. Um, and I was just wondering what a night looks like for Damon uh, as he comes home and relaxes. Typically, uh, after spending some time with them and making sure they're content and such, um, usually making sure they're asleep, um, mostly TV, and um, probably has a uh, his phone up trying to check for any other contacts. Um, you nice get a yeah, you, you get a little blip on your phone, um, and it's a uh, video of security feed from the museum. It's a a, a video file, and you see. Um, like a, a man with a purse running toward the security and behind them um, it, it go ahead and make a perception check for me you you notice that they're being followed okay um okay uh, you notice that uh, one person being followed uh, their hair um, shakes for a moment. This woman in a biker outfit, and their their hair like whips out and kind of like pushes past someone, and then wraps back up into the braid. Um, and behind them, uh, you see like this little kid that is um, beelining it after um, this this woman with the weird hair. <laughs> Something must be up with this cigar. <laughs> just kind of like, like rim it out and like throw it away. And just go back to the phone and kind of look at it again. <laughs> uh, so we, we phase through the phone screen back into the security footage and we see uh, Anelian and Medusa in pursuit of um, this bag thief um, that has now come up on security and seems to be trying to sneak their way through um and they throw it over their shoulder like everything's natural and start to press their way through security with this bag um now you do a phone so d if you wanted to you could call up medusa and be like yo like something's weird right yeah i'll go ahead and do that you know tell her about the person i just met standing by the statue and tell her what's going what they did so uh medusa you get the news of uh there's this young crying woman who's missing her bag in place of the person that you thought you were looking for okay so i'm not i'm not actually following blondie like i wanted to i unwittingly started following an actual thief no. Um, as you're given this this information, you realize that you're like th this thing must have happened at some different time. Like you're you're not even like this is like none of the the things are right. <laughs> Nothing seems right now. Um, it's not that you got confused. It's that you were following someone who took a bag, and it just happened to be the wrong person at the wrong time. Okay. Well, thief is a thief, so I I scream out ahead of him at security, thief, that man has stolen my bag. And I, like, really ham it up. I'm like, ooh, terrible crime. Like, Margot Robbie it. <laughs> I'm just like, that man took my bag. That is an expensive Versace bag. I want it back. The yeah, the crowd ahead of you turns and uh, turn and and wide eyes. <gasps> what what? And you know, and, and people and some people are like, "What the hell?" Is some kind of like you know YouTube 
prank or whatever, backing away to the walls. Some people just keep walking. But it kind of clears in a way that there's that person with the bag just thrown over uh, their shoulder, right? Um, just pushing their way through security. Um, uh, whoa. Threw my dice all over the floor. There we go. Um, uh, so you see security, like, bust out of their, like, little, uh, like, where they're, like, locked behind those metal detectors and, like, checking, ba like, bags that are coming through and stuff like that. Um, one of them, like, leaps over the, the table and is like, hold up, let's, you know, let's talk about this. And the, the guide tries to take off in a dead sprint. And... He bowls over the the officer that had jumped out in front of him, like absolutely just shoulders past. He ran through the metal detector, and he is uh, running toward the entrance of the museum. I take off after him. I have my bike boots, boots on. I have a great grip. Let's try it. I woke up wishing a mother would. All right. Um, Let me pick up the rest of my dice. Because <laughs> I threw them all over the ground for whatever. Oh, I got the shakes pop. Does it. The floor is the dice board. <laughs> the world is my <laughs> dice board. Um, okay. All right. Um, give me uh, like a dexterity check as you uh, as you burst through this crowd of people diving in and out. 13. Those are two rolls, right? So since I haven't been called, you know. I'm sorry. I'm just yeah, yeah. assuming, like I, I don't, you know, I, I didn't have a, a second uh, person calling me that something's wrong. Do I still assume that this is the guy from the deal? Yeah, I mean that she's now. They're both now running. You're like, hey, great idea. Like that's a great way to slow him down is to make him think that he's a guy that stole your purse. Like you're, you know, yeah. you're in on it. You could roll an insight check if you'd like to see if there's some weirdness going on, but. To you, yeah, you're I chasing think, the guy who yeah, took the bag. I would probably just uh, start sprinting behind them. <laughs> like, I'm just still following. I don't just think full anything on sprint. has really changed, yeah. Uh, so go ahead and give me... Um, let's see, who, who's all... So, D, you're still at the exhibit. So, Anelian and Medusa. Um, Medusa, I'm going to have you give me dexterity checks. Anelian, you're going to give me um, athletics checks. Um, go ahead and give me an athletics check to get... Oh, well. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Oh, there shit. it is. Okay, yeah. Um, um, mm -hmm. You're still a small child, so it's just like this little schoolboy yeah. trying to run. <laughs> um... So yeah, the the little boy is is running, and 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 one of the security card guards just like grabs you by the forehead, like stops you and pushes you back. All right, come on, get, this ain't a place for you. Come on, get about it. Get it. We don't know what's going on here. Go back to your exhibit. Find your mama. Um, and uh, and and uh, uh, that's but that, that is my mom. I uh, well, uh, you know we'll hold you here, kid. Uh, you do do you know your mama's phone number? Can we can we we can? She's in the middle of something. Can you not? Jesus. Uh, and then... <laughs> uh, he's like, all right, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go get your mom. Come on, kid. And, like, <laughs> he, he, uh, and, and, like, puts a hand back to you um, to lead you in this chase after your mom, after this bag thief. Um, <laughs> D, um, where are you headed? What's what? What's your what are where are you going? Well, once I hear all the commotion and see what's going on, I take off toward the commotion because, you know, now I'm like, okay, I've got to find out what's going on. So I head after Medusa and Anelian and just try to see if I can catch up with them and, um, you know, see if I can help in any way. Okay, so you, yeah, you hear all that commotion and it occurs to you that maybe, like, that crowd might be too thick to get through. Um, like, roll me a survivalist check to, like, trace your way a different path out of here, maybe, so you can, like, bypass the crowd and catch up quicker. You start thinking about how the museum's laid out and, like, 
Nice. Um, so yeah, you know that there's like a, a hallway that leads over an exhibit into like a, an, an, a separate exit. Um, and you start headed toward that exit. Um, as you head outside, you, uh, you see in this, this, uh, you know, blizzard of a snowstorm that's happening outside. Um, you see the, the man with the bag come dashing out of the museum, down the museum steps, um, and behind him, uh, two security guards, are, hey, 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 hold up, hold up, stop there, stop, and, and running down the stairs after him, um, and you have come out this, uh, there's like some wrought iron fencing and some uh, 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 evergreen bushes and things like that that you've managed to like sneak out into from this side exit. Um, uh, and that's that's what you see that that scene playing out before you. Would you like to is do anything? Any um, is there any way I could like try to stop him with like one of my weapons that I have? Sure. Or yeah. No, I mean, you could, you could, I mean, yeah, you're, so these, these guards that are running up are, they are veiled, right? They are, uh, they're humans that don't know anything about the magic world. So, um, you could try to go really pedestrian and mundane about this or, you know, wh whatever seems best to you. What, what do you got in mind? I want to grab my crossbow and try to shoot him and wound him so he'll slow down. All right. Um, so, uh, go ahead and give me an attack roll with that. I believe you click the weapon there. So that is a six to hit, right? Yeah, so this arrow comes flying out of the bushes um, and, and plants in the snow uh, next to the guy with the bag. Um, right then, uh, Medusa, you, you exit the building, um, and shortly behind you is another security guard with a, a child that's like, Mom! <laughs> Come back! <laughs> <laughs> not my pig, not my farm. And I keep running even faster. Do you do you say that? I'm like, actually like, yeah. I was like, not not my circus bud. That ain't mine. I, oh no! I, even, um, I just keep running. The, I'm just like, she I'm weirded that, out. I'm weirded out. I, that this small child is yelling at me. I would like to just point past the guard behind him and say, "There she is," and I'm hoping that he turns around. Okay. And um, if he does. I, I bet he does like it. Absolutely. So you what? I'm oh, sorry. I wild shape into a cat. You wild shape into a cat. Okay. Um, so he's like, what are you, what, that wasn't, but you said that, where is she in? And then, and like turns around, you are gone and there's a cat there. Yeah. And I'm just Wait. beelining after Medusa again. <laughs> Do I see this happen? Because I'm weirded out that there's a child screaming at me. Uh, like, so I've been looking back occasionally, like, what the hell do you want? Sure. Uh, well, uh, roll me a perception check. I'll tell you how much you saw of that last bit. Uh, 21 on perception. Okay. So, um, you, you saw that whole thing transpire. Like, you were like, what? That ain't my kid. And then you kind of, like, took a moment to, like, I want to, I need to know what's going on. You see that whole thing, and you see this kid turn into a cat and just beeline for you. Nope. 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 Too many problems. Too <laughs> many problems at once. And I'm running even faster after this guy to the point where I'm like, I almost, uh, I kind of want to use a little bit of my, my freezing ability to like just have them kind of stop. Can I possibly sure. use that to like freeze everyone running ahead of me and just kind of hold them? Um. So in order for your, um, petrifying gaze to work, you have to mm -hmm. see a target's eyes, right? Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think you're going to be able to pull that off. Okay. Um, I was hoping I could at least, like, semi... Not petrify them fully, but at least make them freeze for a split second. Uh, maybe I should try to shoot them again. 
Yeah, because now I have, like, these two guards ahead of me, and he's a lot further ahead than I thought he was, so... I, I thought um, he was closer. Yeah, let's so uh, let's let's roll back around to Merc. This guy is running full force as as fast as he can down the sidewalk. His feet are like on the ice, but he's like trying to maintain pace. Um, and uh, do you step out of the bushes at this point? Um, let me see if he even noticed that arrow. There's a lot going on. Yeah, he didn't even notice that arrow flying out of the bush. It it went right past him. Um, so at this point, you would still have a chance for another uh, sneak attack or um, some sort of uh, something that you would like to do. Go for it. Okay, I'm going to send another arrow his way, and hopefully it won't just hit the grass. All right, see it. Uh, a seven misses it, it it again like right past him into the snow um and he's oblivious he's so afraid of the security guards running behind him that he didn't he didn't notice like full-on arrows being shot at him through the snow um and he's just booking it um my gosh this kills my CRT. <laughs> <laughs> Um, at this point, uh, he, uh, he, he's running down the sidewalk and he, uh, pulls out a, a little cell phone and you see him running and like scrolling and swiping and bop, 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 hitting the thing. And he's running along. Um, and you notice that he's, he's making a phone call. Uh, let's go back to Anelian. You are in cat form running off of, uh, again, uh, running after a snake lady, running after two security guards, running after a bag thief who's being shot at by a crossbowman in the Evergreens in the blizzard of Chicago. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, everyday things. Yeah. A lot of crap is going down, and at this point, I'm just worried that a lot of bystanders might uh, take the fallout from that. So I'm, even though I'm a little bit faster as a cat, I like keep the distance and just sort of observe if anything bad happens to anyone. Okay, so you actually hold I'm back. Just, I'm just... still like trailing, yeah. Sure, just keep an eye. I'm on not. Everything. I'm not trying to catch up at this point because I mean. I... Medusa has also not really done anything bad, so I'm not like chasing her per se, just sort of chasing the chase, I guess. Totally, yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> it's a news reporter. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so at this point, the the chase uh, is 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 headed toward um, one of the the bigger entrances of the art museum. This place, this place takes up like a whole stretch of uh, Michigan Avenue and um, it's coming upon this, these two huge statues of lions. Um, Merc, you look up to your side and you notice these, these uh, once bronze now, you know, greened with age or copper and, and greened with age, um, lions. And you've heard these tales about how they're supposed to be protectors of the park, um, and of the city. Um, would you like to try and commune with them in any way? Reach out to them? Yeah. That would try to, you know, talk to them and see if there's a way that they can help stop the guys. Sure. Uh, go ahead and make me a, uh, religion check oh man um you ha is there like a reason that you know so much about them like why do you have this connection to them have you dealt with them before do you guys get drinks on fridays like why why does why is this so on the mark it's just something that, you know, I had learned about, you know, from just growing up in my family. That, you know, if I have the ability to communicate with, you know, beings like that. Right on. Um, so, yeah, having having been around 
I mean, you've been in Chicago almost since I think the Great Chicago Fire. I think from your your backstory, um, like the eighteen hundreds and stuff like that. So like you uh, you've been around since possibly those those lions were even constructed and placed there, and uh, and you've yeah you've known for a while and you can bring them to life. Um, so you you speak out their names and they shake off this um, snow. <laughs> And it falls to the ground um, around them. Uh, and he says, Is it spring already? Unfortunately, no. We all wish it was, though. I need your help. My help? Why would you wake one of uh, the brothers for help? Hmm? See that person running with his bag? There's something suspicious going on, and I'm having trouble catching him, and he needs to be stopped. As you will. Mm, he stretches, and he does like that big cat thing where they turn into like a U, and like an upside down U, and he's like. <laughs> He lets out this enormous roar, um, and the 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 bag thief is absolutely wow, absolutely petrified. He like begins like grabbing at his chest, and he's like he saw it, like he heard it, um, and and he shouldn't have, right? Um, and he he drops the bag, and 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 he's just like, I don't want. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he like throws the bag at the security guards, and he's like, I don't. I didn't. I'm sorry. And he like takes off running across the street, um, <laughs> and uh, um, and and into the city. Um, the. Thank you. You're welcome, child. And he, and he lays back down, and his stony exterior um, seems to solidify once again. Um, the security guards uh, run up and grab the bag, and they're like, God damn, these crazy goddamn kids, I can't believe this. And there's like lipstick and makeup and like a pocket coin purse, and, you know, stuff like, like just sprayed all over. He's like, We gotta. Oh, that lady. Oh, here she comes. This is her bag anyways, right? And they're, like, picking up. Like, sorry, lady. Here's all your stuff. So, Medusa, you come running up. Um, and these two security guards hand you your bag. Like, sorry, it looks like a bunch of stuff sprayed out. I'll try to hand you a couple things here. Um, and uh, I don't know. Uh, D, do you come out at this time? Do you, like, reveal yourself since you're not really trying to be on the, the chase anymore? Yes. So uh yeah, Medusa, you'd notice that that D is in the the bushes and and comes out and these two security guards are just like, Ma'am, is this your bag? Is this you know, is this what you were looking for? He's gone. He's gone. Um, thank you for your help. And I, like I grab every I don't even like pay attention. I just like put everything back in this bag so we can get it back to this lady. <laughs> okay. I'm just like so done with everyone. <laughs> There's a freaking uh, weird cat following me. Yeah, and Anneli, and you at that moment you you come up and uh, what what is your how do you approach the situation? You see the the two that entered earlier. Um, from the bag being spilled, do I see that it's just mundane stuff? Yeah, you could do a perception check to see if there's anything special in there. I think I have to use the cat stats for that. Do I? There's a plus no, one short sword, sword in there. <laughs> There's a vorpal blade. <laughs> uh, the cat cat just yells dibs. <laughs> um, yeah. So from what you see, um, you're you're looking around. You don't see anything crazy, but then you spot like a like one of those little lip balm containers that's shaped like a ball that you just like pop in half, and you're like, oh. Block and you like jump at it, swat it, and it goes whoosh, off into the snow. Um, <laughs> Are you kidding oh, me? <laughs> um, well, I just I'm, gonna, 
I guess I, 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 I gain a little bit distance, jump up somewhere if there's anywhere that's all slightly elevated nearby. Uh, and, yeah, where the uh, where those lions rest is like a yeah. big platform. So yeah, you could just jump like up right under the lion. lions that there totally didn't just scream really loudly and probably spooked me as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean the chase has sort of concluded. I don't still don't know what this whole deal was about fully. So I guess I'm just surveying if anyone really got hurt or anything like that. But if the chase has concluded, I'm just sort of backing off a little. If you guys don't have any um, words that you would like to exchange, we are going to go ahead and like go to night and we'll head into the next scene. I just didn't know if the three of you had anything to say. No, I, I just hand the bag to D because D saw the actual person who had her bag stolen. And I try to like calm my hair down from hissing at the cat. Because <laughs> I'm just like hey, mantra, trying to be calm, trying to be cool, trying not to let the world get to me. Freaking cat, creepy cat, and then people I, running around. I take the bag and you know return it to the person after I found them because they were still standing at the statue because they were just so traumatized. And then I wonder why in the world there was a cat running after us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so as those thoughts uh, echo in your mind, we, um, we, we fade to black as, uh, as we see um, uh, Damon in his home, uh, in, his, in his recliner, yeah, cigar puffing, watching the security footage of what just transpired. How much of that do I see? Uh, like do it. You definitely. I mean, you roll me a perception check. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, um, fucking mental I'm not cheating. I swear. <laughs> you saw a little boy become a cat. You saw a stone lion stand up and roar. Uh, you saw a bag thief piss himself and run into the city. <laughs> and now there's a, a woman that her hair is like the hair that like moved and shoved somebody out of the way earlier is now like ecstatic and it, it, it looks kind of like snakes. And she's like, shut up and like putting it back into the spot, right? You see him like staring at his phone, completely stone cold face, like no emotions, but he like picks up a cigar with this extremely shaky hand and just. Must be a prank or something. <laughs> just kind of like turns off his phone and is like, Yes, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Shaky legged walks to bed. Still completely uh, stone cold, calm face. The body, though, is just. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a break there. Let's go ahead and take. Five ten minutes. Use the bathroom. Get some water. Uh, get a snack. Whatever you need. Um, thank you, chat, for hanging out. Hope you're having a good time. Um, we'll be back in a few minutes. So before break, there was uh, a bag exchange that happened. Um, Damon had exchanged this bag at the museum, and it seems that the exchange happened hours before. Uh, the group that ended up arriving to investigate and try to uh, intervene um, had shown up. There's just some bad info and some bad timing. Um, we came back home with Wa, who, or with Damon, who uh, got a, a an email with uh, some security footage of <laughs> what happened hours later. Um, and what happened was a little kid was chasing Medusa, was chasing security guards, was chasing a bag thief. A kid turned to a cat, uh, Medusa's hair, you know, snakes, and a giant stone lion came to life and roared and scared the bad guy off. So, um, he's been, uh, 
introduced to the veil or his cigar was laced. He's not quite sure yet. <laughs> Probably just Chicago rats, you know, just do a rats. <laughs> They're big or something, maybe, you know. It's the pollution, the fumes coming in. I gotta close that window more often. <laughs> they say it's fresh air, but I mean, uh, <clears throat> the next morning, uh, Damon, you wake up, and uh, as your eyes are Beginning to open, uh, your hands feel heavy. Um, and you, your senses begin to come to, and you go to rub your eyes, and one of your eyelashes gets stuck in something on your hand, and like rips a couple eyelashes out. Um, Ow. you open your eyes. And blurry vision shows you have guns duct taped to your hands. Your vision is spinning, um, and you're, you're you're feeling sick to your stomach, um, and you begin to make out some letters that are written on the ceiling of your apartment. You squint through the swirling room and the dizziness and the guns, and you see where's the egg? Um, written in blood on your ceiling. The blood leads to the light switch, which leads to the floor, and there are drops of blood leading out of your room down your hallway towards your children's room. I get up, or Devin gets up as quick as possible and starts following, or going right to the, the kids' rooms. You uh, f rush down the hallway, into the room, bust open the door, and where your kids should be sleeping is a snake in each of these beds. And on a table sitting in between the two beds is a piece of paper. <clears throat> on the piece of paper is uh, an address. These are just like loose snakes? Loose live snakes are in your children child's beds. Uh, in a panic state, um... Well, first he would go for the paper, then. All right, so you it's, pick up the paper. Um, it's it's an address. It's uh, somewhere in Southport. There's like a, um, trying to rattle off streets and sound like I remember where I lived in Chicago, but somewhere in Southport. Um, and I mean, you recognize the place. You're gonna have to hop the L and and get over there. It's not exactly close by. What are the snakes doing? Are they just sitting there? They are coiled and they're, they seem to be watching you. They're hissing and you hear just slight noises coming from them. He's going to... Yeah, he's going to reach into his uh, satchel. Or actually, I'm sorry. He still has guns tapped to his hands, right? Mm hmm. Are these his guns, or the guns he's never seen before? Um, I mean, there's a lot of duct tape, but I mean, you you know how to fire one if you needed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he just looks baffled by this, and then just out of frustration, just kind of points at both of them and then attempts to pull whatever trigger he can. At the snakes? Shoot. Yep, just... Okay. <laughs> it's 
So we're gonna need an attack roll with you've got a you've got a gun weapon, right? Or a, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Okay, cool. Oh, cool. The, yeah, yeah. Equivalent, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you you just blow the head off of this thing. It just splatters all over the wall. Um, the bullet dives through your your child's bed and um, you know disappears somewhere. Uh, there's I'm another just... snake. Yeah, goes for the second shot of the other one. <laughs> okay. Oh, a snake. Uh, you can ignore the sneak attack damage, by the way, because uh, <coughs> it's not stealthing. I mean, with that, <laughs> you just blow the head off this other snake. <laughs> Both snakes just splattered across the wall, um, and and the the note I don't know between your teeth or like <laughs> shoved into a pocket or something. Yeah, um, essentially he just kind of like grabs or like just kind of like slaps it up and like tries to stick it in his jacket and then tries to like hide his his hands and his like big or goes to put on his jacket and like just kind of slips them in there and then just starts heading out. Okay, uh, so you, uh, yeah, you work your way out of your building, um, using your, your elbows and, and what you have to, to function, um, and make your way to the sidewalk where you head down to the bus stop. You, uh, you know that this is going to be the best way to get over to where you're headed. Um, you, uh, step up on the bus and, uh, and, and start to take your seat and the driver puts a hand up and goes, hey buddy, I need your card. CT, you gotta scan it, guy. Or the, it's a dollar fifty, one or the other. He pulls out his handgun <laughs> and aims at him and says, um, "What was this? The address again?" I mean, you could, yeah, you rattle off the address, I guess. You're gonna get me to this address right now, as quick as possible. <clears throat> Go, Go drive now. Oh, oh god! Oh god! All right, okay. Um, all aboard! <laughs> and the door closes. Um, and, and he pulls away and says, all right, and then takes the address from you, um, and, and begins, uh, driving away downtown, um, uh, or, or head, not downtown, but heads, heads down the street, whatever. Um, Medusa, <coughs> you get a ping on your phone. Um, where are you at this next morning? What have you been up to? I'm, I'm back in my own place, um, since I also run a gym, I'm probably in the gym early morning, opened it up for other customers, and just, like, going over last night's actions in my head, like, what the hell happened, how could we have had such bad intel, um, what, who else was there, and why were they following us, uh, just so many different questions, and I'm just, like, trying to work it out in my head while I get everything ready and open. Sure, yeah. Uh, so you've been um, conversing with, like, the your other Gorgon sisters that, that work the gym with you, and uh, um, they... Um, they tell you that uh, this actually wasn't the first incident at the museum, um, and that it, it turns out that there was an item um, possibly stolen, not from an exhibit, but from like the storerooms. Um, and it's kind of being kept hush hush, but um, someone thinks that some, some other item may have been uh, taken at the museum. Um. <clears throat> I'm like, okay, okay. See, this is this is why I depend on you, ladies. You, you help me. You help me get through the day. You really do. Donuts for everyone. Tomorrow, <gasps> I promise. Yes. <laughs> um. So uh, you get a ping on your phone, a little like alert. Um, you've you have uh some sort of like bypassed your phone through the alert system of the city that you pick up on certain like police scanner activity things like that and your your phone cuts through with a little alert that says um cta bus hijacked um north side westbound 
Uh, what the? Could it get any weirder around here? And that's coming from me. <laughs> like, honestly. Um, this and town is getting strange. You uh, being on the west side, you know that that's headed at least in your general area, right? It's headed your way. Yep. Uh, I tell the ladies to keep working. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go grab my jacket. I'm, I can't take the bike because there's too much snow. So I I have to go get my my gas guzzling jeep instead that I leave parked behind the the gym. There you go. Um, so you, uh, you run off in your Jeep, taking off to, to, to find out where this bus is headed. Um, we cut over to the PI's office and Casil is, uh, hanging up a call while answering another one going, yes, I know there's a bus. We got it. And he just leaves it off the hook. Um, as you walk in D and he goes, D this mess, we got to go. You got to figure out what's going on with this bus. There's some guy, he's got the, the bus driver held up running across town with the bus. Uh, he's headed, headed West. And, and we, we don't have a whole lot of information cause nobody's talking to us on the bus. We, we've got just the tweets and, and what else, but I, I got calls going crazy. <laughs> After I finish my fourth cup of coffee, because last night I eat it and I crashed anyway um then I just look at him and I'm like all right just give me another cup of coffee and then I'll be on my way and so I jump in my car <laughs> and because well you know snow and um, I just grab my phone and I just start checking it before I start driving and I just shake my head and I'm going oh uh as you're like why yeah as you're getting your uh your car started up and you're checking your phone you see like tweets that are there's like a twitter video of a guy in a, a tall like a tall guy in a brown or trench coat that like pulls a hand out um like a gun out of his pocket and points it at the bus driver um and it's being like shared and shared and shared and it's being deleted but other people downloaded it and it's being shared and shared and shared and you're seeing like this thing just like virally take off online <coughs> um go ahead and roll me a perception check as you're watching that video nice um, so you notice that the guy's hands are duct taped to the guns. The guns are attached to his hands. Um, he is not, it seems like, you know, he's not doing that on purpose, at least. I see his hands and I'm just like, what? Why just crazy, too much crazy. Um, okay, so you, you get your car started up and take off uh, toward west side trying to uh, track them down. Anelian, um, you are uh, contacted um, uh, by like a, by an ENT team that's already like prepping to go out to like follow this bus in case anything happens. Um, and you're, I'm assuming responding to that call, you know, uh, prepping for that ride out and uh, trying to head that direction. Is there anything else that you might be doing today or, or looking for? What uh, time is it right now? Uh, it's about... roughly what time of day? Like 9 a.m. So it, people are trying to get the finishing up like and, a night shift yeah. at the clinic. They see like bags under his eyes, and he he responds to call just a oh, brother. And then you see as he stares into this mirror, just shape shifting away the bags under his eyes and head out the door. Nice, nice. Like shape shift yourself into like a. <laughs> fresher looking version of yourself <laughs> that's awesome um so yeah you you head out um and join up with that emt team uh and uh they they take off after this bus trying to catch up and possibly intervene um uh damon <laughs> 
How you doing, pal? I'm having a terrible day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of the snakes. On this Monday to Friday week. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. Yeah. So, you have this. Uh. The driver. Uh. Held up, and it, the the bus is roaring through the city. Uh. You begin to hear like as helicopters begin to. Um, gather over over overhead. You see like news copters and things like that. Um, there's sirens that begin to wail. There's obviously police and ambulances that are closing in on your position. Um, well, this couldn't get much worse for Monday. <laughs> He's still holding this position there and just um, uh, kind of like digs the the barrel into the guy's uh, side a little bit more and says. Don't even think about stopping here, right? I guarantee you there'll be two bullets in you before they can even get near the car if you stop. Uh, he's, uh, okay, but uh, now now what about that, though? And he points up ahead, and the the police have created a, a barrier in the middle of the intersection. There's two, two cop cars, like, nose-to-nose -nose in the intersection. Um, there's cones set up, and they got two, like, other vans set up uh, 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 blocking off the side streets to that section there. They're trying to block the bus and stop it. How far do we have cops behind us right now? Uh, you hear a siren. Uh, I mean, taking a look back, you see that there's like a kind of like an ambulance or an EMT vehicle that's catching up to you. How thick is the snow? Uh, the stuff that's like pushed to the sides on the sidewalks and stuff, it's it's a couple feet deep. Like it's pretty thick stuff. Unlock the door. <laughs> uh yep. <laughs> and he <laughs> just swings the door open. I find a snow pile and I attempt to yeet myself out the door into the snow pile to get away. <laughs> All right, can you make a, a acrobatics <laughs> roll for me as you yeah. leap out of the bus? I have a good acrobatics, okay? Yeah, dang, there you go. So you you perfectly tumble and <laughs> into a, a snowbank. Um, up ahead, you hear the, the bus brakes. <laughs> squealing the bus goes sideways it's sliding toward the the two cop cars and like there's a shot of the two nose like the the noses of the the police cars and the bus is like Eek! and like just meets the cop cars um and he's able to stop it just in time um and uh, you just like get up dust yourself and take off running like i, I go diving for the nearest alleyway and, <coughs> and trying to find a way to veer around this and like sneak past the Get to where I'm going. All right, so Damon uh, takes off down a side street. Um, the bus completely blocks their view. You know, you got free run of where you want to go, um, and so you take off down an alley. Um, <laughs> uh, back to uh, Medusa, you're seeing the same viral things, just like feeding into your phone about you know the guy with the uh, hand or. Guns for hands. Um, they're calling him like Gunny McGun hands and stuff like that online. And there's already memes getting made. Um, and uh, you, you, you've heard on the police scanner that they're trying to to block him at like a like a Wrigleyville or a, a Wrigley um, stop that you could. They're trying to set up a barricade that we talked about in the last scene. <laughs> And now you know about that, is what I'm trying to say. So you know where that barricade's getting set up, um, and uh, possibly where he may be at the time. Um, there's like you know news choppers filming the thing. Uh, what are you What are you looking to do? Are you just holding your ground, or? <clears throat> um. Well, it's going through Medusa's head. She doesn't really believe in coincidences, especially after. Her last adventure during St. Patrick's Day. So she's wondering if maybe this craziness is tied to last night or the bag exchange somehow. She's like, things are getting real weird in Chicago, so this doesn't really make sense. 
So she's just like, I I have to find this guy because he had the chance to hurt somebody and he didn't. It's obvious he's running scared. So maybe he has information on what's been going on. So I want to try to track him down. Okay. So um, are you going to like digitally try to like figure out who he is or do you want to physically like I'm leaving going to going to find him because I know where that barricade's at. I'm going to go find him. Okay, so you uh, shoot out the door, hop in your Jeep, and I mean, you were, you were already driving around, right? So you, um, you hop in your Jeep and take off um, to in a, in a new direction, spin out in the street, and take off toward where you think he's at. <clears throat> yeah, because um, I have that police scanner, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, the bus driver probably, when he talked to the cops, probably told them, hey, I was given this address. Yeah, as so I probably when, hear that. That's true. That's true. Actually, like he he's he's trying to piece together this address. Let me see. Um, let me see. Oh, damn! He's got a good memory. He uh, he spits <laughs> out um, the address um, and roll me a uh, an intelligence check. To see if you can remember, if you can like kind of place where that's at, because you live in this city. Oh, perfect twenty. Uh, this is the address for the Grove. This is the bookstore okay. that is kept by uh, Tully, um, and and her father Pan. Um, he's headed for a veiled bookstore that doubles as a sanctuary for magic items. Okay, so yeah, I I immediately switch over to where I was driving and I head for it. Um <clears throat> uh, everybody's in separate cars. Who haven't we caught up with? <laughs> Uh, uh, Inelian, um, you're also, uh, listening to the scanners, right? Uh, they would be feeding through the ambulance. You're getting different feeds. Um, you also get a ping through, uh, like a, a, a secure veil line on your phone about, uh, about Medusa taking off from the gym and that she's headed somewhere. Uh, Medusa, would you have told anybody where you're headed, or are you just kind of flying solo? Um, I did send a quick text to D because we are technically working on, like, the same stuff. Yeah. And I'm just like, hey, something fishy with this, with this uh, bus jacking. This guy seems scared. I'm going to head to XYZ and try to, try to head off the cops. Totally. Um, so, uh, Anelian, you, you end up gathering this, this address, um, through the EMT line, as well as the, the scanners that are feeding in and, and the ping, um, you end up having a, an address that you could supply to the driver to, uh, take you to, and D, you, ob you obviously get exactly the information you need from Medusa as you're driving as well. Um, Anelian, how would you like to, to handle that? So I, 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 I'm probably in the back of this uh, EMT car and I, I lean forward into the, the driver's cabin where I'm assuming two drivers are sitting mm -hmm. and I just lean forward and I have an address where they're headed. We should probably head there. If anything's going to happen, it'll be there. Um, and I supply them with the address. Uh, could you make a persuasion check with advantage? He goes... Uh, you know, but uh, they said that we should be following this bus in case there's any injuries. Eh? We might, okay, we might have to make that a deception check then. Or deception, oh, sorry. My... Yeah, deception or persuasion, whichever. Is um, yeah. Hold on. My character sheet has some loading issues. There we 
go. I'll see you in like half an hour. <laughs> I mean, I can roll in roll 20 real quick. Uh, just a d20 and then... If you, you um... Uh... More. If you didn't have your D&D page open before you opened Roll20, you need to refresh your Roll20 page. No, it just suddenly started loading my D&D Beyond for some reason. Oh. And now it's just in a loading loop. So, I'm gonna roll twice. And I believe that would be a plus six with my uh, proficiency. Cool. So, 16. Now it's loaded. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he, um, yeah, he goes, uh, you know, that sounds like good information. If we can get ahead of the bus, then that means we can possibly get, you know, get set up. Uh, before whatever ends up going down with this Mr. Gun hands, right? Um, so uh, he ends up swerving off the trail of the bus um, down the street uh, toward this address that you've figured out. <coughs> um, uh, let's do... I'm trying to, f let's do, like, this might be a weird way to do it. Let's do initiative rolls. Like, everybody do an initiative roll. Um, but everyone has advantage except for Damon. Because he's on foot. And this is a, basically, I'm trying to see who gets there first. Because he bailed out of the bus, but the three of you had a late <laughs> start, but you're in cars. <laughs> And it's got his hands in his legs, his legs in his hands, despite yeah. the Oh man, I'm Naruto running, it's great now. <laughs> With the okay. guns? Uh, just... <laughs> I'm shooting to How make myself I... go faster. No. <laughs> How would I do that? Uh, let me see if there's a... There's a, a roll initiative button on your... on the monster stat block. There, there you go. go. There we go. Damn. Okay. Enthusiastic. Um, so, Damon, uh, you come Naruto running up to this address, <laughs> and and slides like <laughs> perfect anime slide um, up to the up to the door of this like broken in weird store. Like the glass is broken and the place is overgrown and with the snow like it's just the place is all snowed over and the door is locked up and stuff like that um and as you are taking all of this information in you hear from around the corner as a jeep like swerves around the corner uh headed your way uh do i see any openings uh, it looks like the glass is open, but like it's one of those. Uh, if there's, um, there would have been some like a there's there's like a, a board. Oh my God, what's the word? Um, Violet. Like you know, if you're window shopping, there's like exhibits, not exhibits, but things oh. in the glass, right? Displays. So the glass is broken in, but there's still like a wall there. Um, so like you could technically get into a display case, uh, but like as way in, there's like a door um, that seems chain locked, but I'm going to go up to the, the chain lock. Um, do I, is there like a, like a lock that's on it? Yeah, there's like a padlock and chains that have been like swooped back and forth. I bring the, the gun over to it and I kind of like lean back again and I just... <laughs> uh, so... Uh, I mean, it's, you know, I don't even need it to roll for something like that, right? <laughs> you put the gun straight to the lock and it blows the lock off. Um, but when the bullet exits the gun and hits the lock, it breaks into like shards of light and the 
like the gun when you fired it has it, it like turned this bright like ivory flash this um, and and the bullet seemed golden as it pierced the lock and just sh- shatters it into this this strange energy. And I like <laughs> same banjo. It's crazy. Uh, I'm going to just kind of continue to stare, like puzzled for a second, um, before hearing. Uh-huh. The vehicle approaching and then just try and bust through the door as quickly as possible. Okay, uh, so you <laughs> run at this door, um, and with the like lock broken and the chain fallen away, you shoulder it. And as when you think like a door should hinge and kind of like fall away to the left, it feels like you've uh, taking a dive into a pool of water as there's like a rush of liquid and like vines that flip past your face um and you come out slightly damp on the other side um and it seems like the door had just given away to like a bush um that you've run through uh and then you you come out the other side in this very dark but nice and well kept bookshop. Again, just gonna stand there puzzled for a second. Um, give me one second here. And just kind of look around and then just be like, <clears throat> All right, I'm here. Where, where are you? And just kind of be looking around and just like trying to go on. I don't have your your egg. I didn't touch anything in that bag. Where are my kids? And just kind of like looking around with duct tape hands. Yeah. Um. You 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 shout these questions into the the empty bookshop, um, and when you mention your kids, where are my kids? You hear one of them. You hear through a wall. Daddy. Just muffled. Daddy, I hear you. Muffled through the wall, um, and would you like to follow that call? Seems to be across the room, like behind the counter. Yeah, we'll do so with gun, like, or guns, like, just kind of, like, up and ready, but, like, as quickly, but almost cautiously, like, just looking around as he's doing it. But, yes, he is heading towards the sound. Sure. Um, So you are making your way behind the counter as outside you hear brakes squeal. (coughs) And uh, we go to Medusa stepping out of her Jeep into the snowy morning of Chicago outside of the Grove Bookshop, which you know is supposed to be kept by Tully. Mm-hmm. So I've been here before, yeah? Yeah. You're okay. you're, you're well acquainted so, with the place. Okay, so I'm just like, okay, this is getting a little spicy. Also, Gunny McGunhands is dumb, and I shut off my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just like, they're the names are just getting dumber as as time goes on. And I'm just like this is stupid. <laughs> I shut up my phone, put it in my pocket, and I um very slowly and calmly walk in. Like I can walk right into the bookshop, right? Yeah, you know exactly how to access the bookshop. Yeah, so I just walk in and I see him walking towards the counter. Yeah, he and... is uh behind the counter. Um, seems to be looking for something. Okay, and I'm like, before you blow my head off, <laughs> hi, you seem to be having a bit of a day. Nice gloves? Guns. Oh, yeah. Again, Gunny McGun hands. That's so dumb. There's a lot of questions are my hands I have on? right now. What? Who are you? Are you the one responsible for this? Can't say that I am. I don't exactly have that level of creativity. Or the determination. I'm kind of lazy in that aspect. 
But how did you end up like that? And how did you get in here? If I knew that answer, I think I'd be in much better standing of things. That's how yeah, I woke up everyone. this morning. You woke up with guns taped to your hands just but from going to sleep? Doesn't really happen to the average Joe, does it? No. It doesn't. That's why I'm confused. Hmm. They no have clues? my kids, whoever it is, and I'm trying to find them. That is serious. They didn't leave you any other clues as to why they might have taken your kin kids? They said they want something. I don't know what they're talking about, though. They're asking hmm. for an egg. I don't know what this egg they're talking about is. Uh, wouldn't Medusa make a uh, I guess a wisdom perception? or intelligence check? I don't know if perception's right. Um, it's more of like a. It's more, oh. yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, so you mentioned the egg, right? Um, and he did, yeah. right? Uh, so. Medusa, you instantly, you know, recognize that as possibly being some sort of arcane item that may be kept here. Um, <clears throat> uh, and you, you also find it strange, obviously, that Tully isn't here. Did, did you see anyone when you came in here? Or has it just been you? It's just how I don't know it's just been me. I heard my child's voice somewhere here. Okay. Again, I'm thinking back to like everything that's happened in the last 24 hours, and I'm, I just go ahead and say it. You, you don't happen to know anything about a, um, an incident at the art museum yesterday, would you? He's gonna pause. I understand if you don't trust me. I don't typically trust people that have snake heads. Rude, but continue. <sighs> he kind of pauses for a second and just kind of just trying to understand reality right now is just going to kind of give up on it and just be like, I was paid to do a drop in the art museum the other day. Don't know what was in it. Don't know the client's name. I was paid to do a drop. Hmm. You don't know anything about what you dropped? No. I have a reputation of hold. I don't look into clientele and what they're actually doing. Hmm. Did you get a look at the person you delivered to? <sighs> kind of also still looking around for his kids, but, uh... They, um, had these very delicate looking hands. And, uh, golden hair of some sort seemed to sliver out from the hood. Hands were of this ivory skin color. Very manicured and nice like. He was barefoot. Not sure why. That's all I know. He was wearing a hood. I didn't see anything else. Oh, that's interesting. And walking towards him, I, like, put my hands up again. I'm like, I'd like to try to get those off your hands, if you'll let me. Because that's making me a little nervous. Don't try anything funny. He kind of puts his hand on the counter, still looking around. Uh, DM, can I use one of my claws to, like, just cut along the tape so we can peel it off? Totally, yeah. Okay, so I, like, raise my hand so you can see how sharp my nails are, so it doesn't surprise you. <laughs> and I just delicately drag along so that we can start peeling the tape. And I'm just like, okay, watch that trigger finger. Friend, friend here. I'm like, this might hurt. And I, like, try to be gentle to rip it off the tape. Also taking all of the hair <laughs> <laughs> off the top of your hands. Totally. Just like, sorry! <laughs> As as the EMT is on route, how do we see like cop cars heading the same direction? 
So I was just about to bring both of you into this. That I was going to say that D and Nellie, you're about to pull up. Was there something specific that you were wanting to do? <clears throat> um, did we see, like, any police cruisers following right behind? Or do we know that they're going to be a little bit until they arrive? It'll probably be uh, a bit until police arrive. They did get the the uh, the address but they have to reroute the units and the clean up mm -hmm. from the 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 bus incident and all and fill paperwork all that crap right <laughs> so when the uh when the ambulance kind of you know skirts in i'd look at the the bookshop and i'm guessing the door's still open yeah to you you know that this bookstore it's a you know it's open to the veil um so you recognize how to like enter this place just kind of by being here um doors aren't exactly doors but you know how to enter places right um so you uh yeah you the the door seems have to be used and is open that, that kind of thing yeah okay i i lean forward into the driver's cabin again grab both of them by the shoulders and just say all right, you better stand on standby. I'm gonna go in and check it out. If there's an active shooter inside, he might have hostages or need any medical help. I'll be right back. Hey, right, Nellian. I... We, we got you back. We're, we're, we'll set up out of We're good, we're ready. And then I head inside. All right. Uh, at the same time, you see a, a car pull up. This is D and her investigator cruiser. <laughs> um, you, uh, uh, yeah. How how would you like to enter the scene? What what's your what's on your mind as you pull up, D? I just get out of the car and you know think about the text that this and I keep my phone on. To and then I just walk in the door, you know, no hesitation or anything because, you know, wouldn't be the first time I'd gotten shot at us or something. <laughs> 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 yep. Uh, so yeah, as you're as you exit the uh, the EMT vehicle, you notice this this person has popped out of a car and is is walking outside. You notice them as. Um, uh, D from last night who would you run into at the museum uh, and you uh, just follow them right on in um, inside uh, the two of you see uh, Medusa standing at the counter of this bookstore taking a claw to uh, duct tape covering the shooter Mr. Shooting McShooty hands uh, <laughs> hands <laughs> To remove the shooty, uh, to just make him make hands. Um, so anyway, no, she's she's taking the duct tape off um, and helping him get rid of the guns that were attached to him. Is anyone hurt? Not yet. Please don't, please don't break my concentration. And <laughs> this is still peeling. Edward shooty hands from. The radar. <sighs> it's just kind of size. <laughs> you hurt anyone on the way in? He's the bus driver, all right? Well, apparently the bus stopped. I. We went here. And I didn't hurt anyone. Case. What about the. I snakes because I killed oh, them no. this morning. Snakes? I'm about done with snakes today. I should have, I should have careful glance over at Medusa to see if she got hurt by him. <laughs> if she's like chopped off some hair or something. Yeah, Medusa's hair is I pull like. Pull one strip. I pull one strip a little too roughly. So I'm ow, like, ow. oh. Oh, sorry. Don't like snakes, do we? <laughs> careful. Sorry. I'll be gentle. Look, this morning I woke up to blood stained ceiling with the words written on it. Where's the egg? The blood trail leading to my kid's room, and my kid's being gone with two snakes standing in the bed. Whoa. I don't have the greatest experience with snakes right now. There's snakes, and there was snakes in the bedroom. Uh, I 
Do we recognize him as the man from the art museum? Uh, no, because the man or different. the the person at the art museum ended up being someone completely different. Um, it was, oh, oh, yeah, I see. You, right. So you okay. you ended up going hours Profiling. later. Yeah, you just mm -hmm. you were like, that's got to be the person. <laughs> he's um, got a coat. I tear the I tear the last piece of tape off and I look at D and go, he's. He's the uh, the bag delivery that we should have were supposed to catch, but we were we were wrong. Great, just when I needed it to be again to be wrong. Gonna hear about that when I get back. Client's gonna hear a lot from me when I'm done with this. <laughs> kind of shakes his hand. Do you have a way um... to contact them? Would I have any way of contacting them? Yeah. Sure. Maybe not. Yeah. I mean, you got your, your phone and you got your criminal background. You can absolutely do that. Yeah. I have ways. I, I need to find out what was in this bag. And we need to find out who it was. That gave my kids are in this building is my primary concern at the moment. I can heard them just a minute ago. This building hasn't been cleared? No, I just called here. There was a note oh, with this address on it, that's why I'm here. Just strange, because the person who runs the bookstore isn't here right now. Yeah, I can see that now. Whatever this place is. Uh, DM, what I know about any area where the they might have might be keeping these kids if the kids are in the building uh you're aware of the like secret vault that exists under the grove um you you know how to access it you've you've been here you're you're you know you've you've been in and out of this place uh you've helped conceal items and take items out so you would know um that there is like a an under like a secret underground vault to this place he kind of uh, well, let out a yell of saying uh, sam rebecca and just would i be aware of around. this underground as well um i think you would you wouldn't know about it specifically um you could you could make a roll though make a uh make a history check okay yeah well yeah you know there's a yeah go ahead if you want to yeah d you can go ahead and roll as well um so yeah you've you've heard of it d but anelian you you've actually read something about it i don't know if you've seen like the architecture plans and for some reason but you or you've helped uh at your clinic you've uh helped uh, a patient that was involved in like constructing this this place at one point and talked about the underground vault or something um so yeah you you're definitely aware of it ex of its existence and d kind of thinks it's like a you know thought that was a myth is uh medusa done freeing demon's <laughs> hands at this point yeah by this point for sure then i'd, I'd look at everyone and just say well, you're here to help right I don't know what I need besides a therapist right now. It's a lot of things going on this day, the yesterday night as well. I don't understand the hell of what's going on. I can People with snakes for heads and later. little girls turning into cats. But for now, let's be a little quiet. And I would like to cast a uh, pass without trace. <laughs> okay, cool. And, uh, yeah, I'd slowly make my way towards this, uh, the, the underground section this, this of this vault place. area. Um, yeah, the, the cries for help that you hear, the, those type of things do, they're coming from a trap door underneath 
um, this like behind the uh, uh, cashier section, right? Um, Medusa, this is the entrance to that underground vault, and you know, you know where to pull the things to rotate and you know lift, and the words to say over the right glyphs in order to get this thing moved and up and out of the way. Um, and down below, you do hear the echoes of "Daddy, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy," uh, echoing throughout the that chamber leading up towards you. Okay, okay. I, I open the chamber and uh, step aside so I can also send a text to Tully to see where they are, if they're around, if they're in town, and what's going on and who's using their space. Sure. Um, yeah, you, you send in... the text out. Sorry. While they're investigating the door and everything like that, could I like investigate the guns and see if there's any trace from somebody other than Damon or might have touched it or something like that. Sure, yeah. Uh, roll a perception check on that as you're investigating those. I mean, or an investigate check, I guess that's... <laughs> 17. Cool. Yeah. Um, we'll take that 17. That's all right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you... Uh, these guns have been blessed. Um, it's not quite holy, but it is celestial, if that makes sense. It is some sort of godly boon has been placed upon these guns, um, which explains why he so easily was able to get into here. Um, it is it is uh some sort of boon of like war it is it is a it's a it's a scary <laughs> like blessing <laughs> to have on something especially something so uh you know as as dangerous as a gun um so uh with the hatch open and the the way revealed to the lower vault of the grove uh you enter and head down into um the secret chambers that are um a sorry let me this is not the music i want right now <laughs> there we go um you head down into uh, these secret chambers. Um, when you, as you descend, you notice more and more of the architecture becomes Greek columns and winding ivy and um, much more of the type of uh, aesthetics that you're used to, Medusa. Um, this is this is much very founded on, you know, Greek. Um, just love and and mythology and and everything is like put into this place um as you uh as you enter past the columns um the the place spreads out wider than it should be like it seems larger and and wider and longer than the the bookshop that that sits above it um, there are, it almost appears like a museum in itself. There are, uh, displays, there are glass covered tables, there are, um, domes and, and spherical hung like terrariums and things that seem to be holding different pieces of artifacts or, um, plants or, or whatever, um, that are rare or special or should be hidden away or are being kept hidden for, uh, one reason or another. Uh, so you find yourself in this this uh, underground garden almost. It's very luscious, like museum atmosphere, but like with the green wall aesthetic everywhere. You know, like there's just plants and uh, and it, the air is like damp and moist and smells nice. Um. Do we hear kids crying? 
Yes, in the distance. Um, you do. You you're following these the echoes of the the daddy, daddy, daddy. Um, and you notice the magic items around you. Um, Damon, you you notice in the distance one that seems to be egg shaped. Damon will look around the room and if not seeing anything of immediate threat will walk towards the egg. I um, try to uh, to uh, imply to move as quietly as possible. He is know, moving trying... very quietly. He's, okay. he's, he, with a shaky hand, he's not yelling back or anything <laughs> and just being quiet. And I guess um, I'm following him. So you, you move toward this like egg-shaped object that caught your eye. Um, and ahead of you is this uh, purple pillow, um, well lit from all sides. And um, covering it is this glass dome. <clears throat> and the middle of the pillow is the egg shape. <clears throat> and as you, you get closer, you notice it's one of those plastic eggs that you get out of a candy machine. Like when you turn the quarter, you know, current, I mean, it's just like, like it pops on one of those little popped mm -hmm. things inside. Um, there is, um, a little like keychain sized rabbit that is, um, being held in there and it's just like, it's nose just going crazy and it's looking around. Right, I'm not going to even pretend to understand what I'm looking at right now. This is a little ways As behind he... them and it's just looking around the corner and I'm just like... Is... Is that a... Is that a rabbit? Alright, uh, Medusa. Um, roll me a perception check. I really need to stop smoking. <laughs> make my way down to them. Okay. Um, uh, okay. I would like to cast Speak with Animals. Okay. Sure. Um, and well, as, as you're casting that, uh, Medusa, you go uh, an, a, is that a, a rabbit? And the rabbit looks at you and makes eye contact with you and goes like it's like slipping and flipping like it can't get grip on the plastic it's falling all over itself um but it's like like banging at the plastic it's it's trying to get out it seems like um and as that happens uh, An alien walks over. Cast speak with animals. What would you like to say? Calm down. Who are you? Holy crap! I can't believe it. Oh my god! Where has everybody been? I've been in it forever. Oh my god! I can't believe it. I've been in it for weeks. And you, what you hear is this like old strained woman's voice, um, and she's saying, you know, I just. <laughs> I can't believe it. it's just they left me with nothing but carrots ah! and she just starts to like cry and you hear this like horrible rabbit squeal as she cries okay 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 we'll, we'll like get you slowly out of raises the gun we'll get you out of <laughs> I, I move between the egg and like both Medusa and Damon because I mean clearly the snakes might be scaring him and then also there's the guy with the guns <laughs> at the freaking rabbit um yeah I'd uh I just move in between and try to calm down the rabbit okay uh yeah she she's taking two breaths She's trying to uh, calm herself, um, and she eventually, uh, she says, Okay, uh, let's start at the beginning. Um, 
My name's Esther. Don't call me Easter. And I've been trapped down here, and I've been trying to bring back spring, as you all know. But those bastard snakes wanted to keep hibernating for whatever, and God knows reason. And they put me in here. And where's Tully? Medusa, where's Tully? Hey, uh, 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 Dr. Druid, ask Snake Lady, where's Tully? The Esther Bunny is asking where Tully is. I, Medusa shrieks, Esther Bunny? <laughs> Essie, is that you? No, the bunny oh guy is like, the bunny was real, but apparently that's a thing now in this world, too. <laughs> you know each other. That's great. <laughs> How do we let go? Like, oh, my phone. And I look at my phone. Do I have a message from Tully at all? Uh, you do. Uh, messages. Oh, my God. I am so sorry. I, oh, my God. I am, I can't believe. I, j I didn't think anything would. I thought I could take like a week. I just, I'm so sorry. I just, listen, I was trying to follow up on the thing from, from when I met the fox lady and I'm in Japan. I'm sorry. <laughs> I quickly text back someone has been using your shop without your permission Essie's in the basement <laughs> and I send a bunch of laughing emojis um she says you get like a laughing emoji back and, with like the, the bunny emoji beside it um and then you get another message that says Wait, I put, I put, I chained it up and everything. Guy blew hole through chains. Had guns taped to hands. Lol. You see dot dot dot. <laughs> no idea what's going on. <laughs> dot 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 dot. She's writing. She's writing. <laughs> shooty McShooty hands. <laughs> In my shop? Take a picture, yep. please, but please get him out. <laughs> Working on it. First, we got to bail out the bunny. Um, she sends you uh, like a passcode that will deactivate the security system um, so that you can lift the glass uh, in order to access the little... Um, plastic egg. I go over to the wall and I just giggling a little bit and I'm like, don't worry, I see we got you. This is gonna be great. I'm gonna remember this forever. And I'm just standing there watching the whole thing like... I'm glad you're all having I a great up time right it. now. I was about I'm to still say, trying to um, find where my kids are. Yeah. The kids. <laughs> we can hear them. We can hear them. That shows that they're at least okay. Don't worry, Essie no. will help you find them. The Easter Bunny. <sighs> Esther Bunny. She was very, very clear about that. Not the Easter Bunny. Whatever, the bunny then. She loves, she loves being a bunny. <laughs> you look at the bunny and her eyes are just like slits. Just like, <laughs> just mad. <laughs> Um, so who wants to go crack open the egg? <laughs> so, uh, Medusa, you you went and and like deactivated the security, right? Um, and so, mm -hmm. uh, once you do that, um, the you see the glass tops on a lot of the exhibits start to open, like. Pssst. And they come up on like little hydraulic right. presses. Um, around you are magic weapons and um, all kinds of like plethoras of um, of of like just sacred items and uh, and some of them hold creatures. Um, and as you deactivate the security alarm, um, 
some of these creatures who have been dead for a long time um, suddenly seem to rise up breathless, their corpses uh, brought to life, um, grasping to life like winter is grasping to spring right now. Um, Quick text to Tully, you should have warned me. <laughs> she, 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 you like send her a picture of like a like a, a, a like a walking skeleton zombie that's like standing up, and she goes, "Oh my god, that shouldn't happen." I that I gave you the right code. It's not my fault. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be in Japan. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, crime emoji, crying emoji. Um, <laughs> that that shouldn't happen. Please, uh, please help. With like 16 exclamation marks after it. Um, Should we be doing something about these creatures? Probably not a bad idea. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and roll initiative. Um, and we are going to have to do some theater of the mind. Uh, Y'all, I appreciate your patience Way and your imaginations. Imagination. <laughs> let's do some drum. Let's do it. <laughs> 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 All right. Smack. To make some notes. Sure. That's not right. What did what did I do there? There we go. I'll be back okay. in just a second. Sure thing. Um, snips, Medusa. Um, yes. You put away your phone as it's just a, a string of uh, texts of curses and things back from <laughs> uh, from Tully, and your phone just like, boom, 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 as you put it away. <laughs> um, and uh, the thing that has uh, stood up before you is uh, this Egyptian mummified figure. Uh, it's holding two scimitars and is dressed in this golden headdress. Um, and it seems to have like rubies in its eye sockets that are glinting back at you and like follow your direction as you move. Um, uh, this thing... Um, Let's. Uh, you have initiative though, um, so you can make the first move. How would you like to go about dealing with that? Um, I cast penetrating gaze, petrifying gaze. Petrifying gaze, nice. So petrifying gaze. Uh, you should be able to click on that. I think. Should cast it in the noise. Uh, a creature that can see Medusa's eyes. Nice. Okay, Medusa can force it to take... Uh, starts its turn. So you're actually going to get a full turn, right? It's petrifying gaze. Medusa fixes gaze and catches... Okay, never mind. We're going to... Okay. So we'll just roll this DC 14... Oh yeah, he definitely fails. Um, so, same throw Medusa is if the saving throw is five or more, the creature, if the saving throw fails by five or more, which it did, the creature is instantly <laughs> petrified. Otherwise, a creature that fails uh, the save begins to turn to stone and is restrained. All right, so instantly petrified. Uh, Last till the creature is freed by greater restoration magic. Uh, unless surprised a creature converts its eyes to avoid saving throw um but we've already made those rolls that thing that so 
<laughs> this this mummy stands up with the two scimitars ready to fight, um, and it makes some horrifying raspy like <laughs> through the like dust and and uh, uh, petrified bones and lungs, um, and you meet its ruby eyes, and uh, the skull begins to freeze, and the noise that it's making <laughs> comes out choked, um, and the stone <laughs> or the skull and the skeleton. <laughs> become stone um, and the rubies drop out of the skull and hit the floor um all right uh in the room there are uh an, two mummies that have come forth from sarcophagi as well as um uh this other creature to be named um, that has crawled forth from an exhibit or it's it's it there's there's a thing in a box that's making noise and the box is open it just hasn't come out yet um, so mysterious creature um, let's see what our timeline says 7 2 17 whoops I wrote the numbers down and not the names what a dumb dumb Medusa and Nellian, it would be your turn. Quick questions. Are there any rocks around? Are there any rocks? Uh, Medusa literally just made a bunch of rocks. Okay, so... I made the, a really the, big one. Did, did that thing crumble, or do it have... No, to it is standing there as, like, okay. a, a stone statue of what it was. Then for the time being, I'd, I'd turn around to, to Damon, and I'd say... Edward... Stand back and protect the bunny. <laughs> and I'd cast uh, Enhance Ability on him. Bears Endurance. Nice. So he would, first of all, get seven temporary hit points. And he has advantage on constitution checks. All and right. then I use my bonus action, action to Wild Shape into an Ape. As my arms just kind of elongate, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm an ape now. And, <laughs> and I'm an ape. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, in down the the hallway, in the distance, you uh, hear uh, the yell of "Daddy, Daddy." That echoes. Um, okay. Make a little note about what's happening down there. And D, your turn. Um, I see the mummies standing there that have come out of the sarcophagus. And I want to throw sacred flame. Hell yeah, alright. So, uh, D sees these. Okay, so he has to survive a DC 13 dexterity save. That rolled. Oh, he's got crappy decks, too. Goddamn toilet paper monsters. I, I rolled a 20, y'all. <laughs> he definitely evaded. I apologize. Uh, I'm sorry. My mummy lived. <laughs> <laughs> you only dodged one damage. So anyway, uh, so yeah, the the fire like hits like some some gold and jewels that's on him and and disperses and and kind and just singes some of his uh, his wrappings. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I want to try the crossbow. What an idiot! Even though it's dead. Uh, you're gonna try the crossbow on him. Even though it's dead. Sure, sure. To something. <laughs> Fifteen. There we go. Now we're doing damage. Um. So the the crossbow bolt pff, lands into uh, the chest of this I thing. I got one. I got one. But did zero damage? Is that what I'm seeing right there? Probably. Oh. Am I am I crazy? Yeah, oh, if you have a negative yeah, one deck, then yeah. Oh, no. 
So uh, yeah, the the bolt plants itself into the mummy, but it, it still keeps moving forward, uh, shambling. Um, <laughs> uh, next up would be um, so behind you, uh, up the stairs and through the trap door. Uh, you hear nothing. That's a that's a big old no. That's a big old nothing. Um, cool, uh, Damon. Uh, there are two mummies. One of them had like fire, just like hit it and go away, and then a bolt hit it, but it didn't look like it did much. Um, there's two mummies stalking one toward you, one toward um, these new friends. <laughs> Is there one that's between me and the sound that's coming from my kids? Yes, the one that is coming towards you is between you and kid noises. I will shoot that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, again, okay. ignore the sneak damage. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, so you you hit it and poof, you see a, a a bunch of wrapping and 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 just old dried uh, uh, sinew poof, fly away from the body. Um, good shot. At least somebody around here can hit something. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Shooty McShooty. Is what to say. And then I'm gonna fire at him again if he's still standing. Cool. Yeah, he he's still up, uh, wobbling towards you. Alright. And with offhand, I'm gonna fire, which the damage won't be correct, I believe, on this shot. So hold on, if it hits. Okay, it doesn't. I assume it does. Actually, it might. Uh, does not hit. Okay. I can track those flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it like hits something priceless, like. <laughs> It shatters. Uh -huh. um, um, and then I'm just going to stow one of the guns as a free action and then just move up to it. You're going to move toward the, the mummy? That's between Yeah, because I'm trying to move around it to get to... Okay. okay. It's... Uh... Back to the top of the order is Medusa. Okay, so um, the the mummy with the bolt in its chest, uh -huh. I actually have like I grab a, a short sword off of one of the displays. There you go. And take a swing for its neck. All right. I hope I hit the right one. There we go. Damn, nice. Yeah, definitely landed and uh, cuts a, across the back of the 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 head of this thing, and and the head like topples forward, and it's just like dangling by some of the wrappings that's still connected, um, and the body is is still shambling forward without its without its head. Um, uh, an alien. So, or Medusa, would you like to? I'm sorry, that was only one attack. Um, right. You can attack again or try to move uh, if you'd like to try to do something. I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to do on your turn. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see, deranged. Okay, I can do a multi attack. So I'm going to. Um, use my snake hair to rip the rest of the head off and then let's see here okay so i want to do snake hair to try to rip the rest of the head off sure. let's see if it hits nice okay yeah that, that yeah that hits and then i hit it i Proceed to um, 
take the short store short short sword my goodness plunge it deep underneath the bolt and use both the bolt and the sword to drive upward and try to split him as far apart as i can okay nice yeah i mean yep yep meet the ac rip up through this thing um and it's just kind of like two have just kind of like stumbling back on both of its legs like trying to find its footing um it's it's like <laughs> whatever kind of equilibrium evil resurrected things have it's thrown way the hell off because like half of its body is leaning this way and the other half is going that way um so now Enelian, please uh, go right up if I were to go towards the mummy blocking Damon's path, mm -hmm. would I leave like a large opening between them and the bunny? Um, it's it's like a ten fifteen foot movement. You, I mean, it's you're moving away from it, but you could get back to it within a turn. You know. Okay, then I would uh, move towards the mummy that is attacking Damon and I am going to multi-attack to slam it with my fist. Nice. Uh, first attack misses. Second one hits. Yeah, I just punch it and then kind of move back, I guess. I'm gonna take the attack of opportunity if it happens. Okay, yeah, uh, if you, yeah, yeah, so if you move back, uh, it gets a mummy charged creature with one of these. Oh my. Creature, the target, uh, it must exceed a DC 11 wisdom saving throw. Uh, you need to survive a DC 11 wisdom saving throw for me. Uh, so That's my strength too. You are frightened uh, as you look through the wrappings and see the thing that lies beneath. Um, it stares back at you and, and forces you to, to move back. Uh, the target fails the saving throw by five or more. It is paralyzed. You did not save it by five or more. The target succeeds. Is a m okay? You didn't do that. Okay. Um, so you are now frightened, so that means you'll have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls. There we go. Alright. I'm guessing I can repeat the save at the end of each turn. Until the end of the mummy's next turn. That's how far Oh, okay. It's on the the end of the mummy's next turn, yeah. Uh, right. Uh, upstairs, you hear some commotion. Okay. Uh, D, it is your turn. Okay, so we still have one mummy that's up and being stupid, right? Yeah, one of them's just kind of hobbling around. He's not dead, but I, I don't think he's really going to be a threat. He's <laughs> He could probably fall over. And you said that there's noises upstairs. Do we know what who's making them? Um, no, it, it's, I mean, you can make a perception check if you'd like. You can try to discern what's going on up there. Okay. Yeah, uh, you're hearing what you thought was, like, maybe, like, the whines of, like, stray cats or something uh, is becoming more clear, and over the the whine of the EMT siren, you're actually hearing police pull up. Um, you're hearing uh, ambulances and, and police. You're hearing other people get in. Um, you're hearing them... Uh, uh, some of them are at least at the entrance of the bookshop, if not, have started to come in or tried to get in. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to cast um, Vomiturgy mm -hmm. so I can 
close the trap door. So that way, you know, we can fight whatever this is without any interference. Okay. Yeah, so you use your magic just to quickly um, shut that trap door behind you. Uh, Manifest a minor wonder, sign of supernatural. Nice, so you just create one of the following. Nice. Yeah, perfect. So, um, yeah, it appears just as like a floor um, back there where you entered. Perfect. Um... And a roll happens. Okay. Uh, Damon, your turn. Okay. Uh, mummy's still in front of me? Yeah, the, the mummy in front of you has been slammed by a giant ape uh, that just showed up out of nowhere, uh, half of its face missing from the gunshot that you did earlier, um, and beyond you hear the screams of your children. All right. I'm going to run up to it. Um, with one of the guns away, pull out um, a dagger and just stab into this thing. Okay. Um, Man. Uh, yeah, you you th you shoot for where you think there's a like a, a, a hunk of body and you just tear through some wrapping like straight through its desiccated ribs or whatever. Um, if you'd like to... So how when I usually play d and I'll let people sacrifice their moves if they want to make a second attack at disadvantage. Um, but also... I still have another attack still. Oh, you do have your attack. Okay, yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah, go for it. Dude. Um, however, I'm going to move beyond it, so we'll probably get a swipe of opportunity against me. Gotcha. Yeah, as as you um, run, it already run swung against past. me, didn't it? I'm sorry. It already swung against me, right? Uh, that's true. Yeah, it, it only gets one reaction per. Yep, yep. And it's I'm gonna slip past it, and then once I get enough distance, uh, so I'm gonna move, uh, thirty feet, and then turn and then shoot at it again. Okay. Nice. Uh, so the sneak attack would be on this one. However, it, it, uh, the nine is actually a six for damage. Okay. All right. So total of nine, I guess, when you look at adding the sneak damage. <laughs> cool. Yeah, you blow another part of its dusty body away. Poof. Um, and uh, to your back, you have uh, a door that seems to... Uh, be separating you from your children. I mean, that's that's you hear the noises most loudly from this door to your back that you've now moved to. Um, Medusa, we're back at the top of the round. I I guess I'm going to. Uh, while they're dealing with this singular mummy, which doesn't seem to be a huge threat, uh, can I go? get Essie out of her egg. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you see an alien leave um, Esser um, in the in the egg behind, and the glass case is open, but she's still in that little plastic egg, right? Um, uh, you can easily move over there, and what do you do? It's like, okay. Just work with me on this. I hope this, I hope this is as simple as it looks. Uh, can I can I do a check to see if there's any like spells or traps on me unlocking the egg? Um, yeah, you can do a go ahead and do an arcane check. Oh, that would be okay. Okay. Uh, intelligence arcana check. Oof. Okay. Um, you. There is magic present, but as far as what it might or might not do, um, you're not quite sure. Uh, roll me an insight check to see if you can, like, check out, like, if this is some bad magic or some, like, okay, you know? Okay, so with a, a 10 on the insight, um, you do realize that the the magic that's here 
um, is it seems like uh, uh, the magic equivalent of Elmer's glue. It is keeping this thing shut. Okay. Um, I take one of my claws and I drag it around the scene. Okay. Um, and then. And, and twist it. Um, yeah, as you as you poke your nail into the side of the the plastic egg, it does that familiar like, and like pops a little bit, and and you work your nail around, and it, it like slowly the plastic like peels apart around, and as you uh, complete the circle and twist the egg, uh, the the pieces seem to like blow apart in your hand as uh this full-sized bunny rabbit uh, or sorry i shouldn't say full size this rabbit the size of a rhinoceros falls out of the egg <laughs> onto the ground and is like it didn't fix me and like her screams echo um throughout um, but sh uh, sh you see that uh, she begins to she begins to shake it off, and her fur begins to calm down, and she begins to become soothed. And she sees the mummies, and she says, "Oh no, not when S is around." And she goes after the mummy, um, pawing it to the ground, uh, and and says, "No, life is meant to end, sugar. I'm about new beginnings." And uh, you see the life force of this thing. <laughs> sucked up into these giant like bunny teeth um as the rhinoceros sized bunny seems to like um slender slim back down a little bit um becoming more and more human sized uh you see the this this uh more petite feminine um uh, uh rabbit go to the other uh, mummy that's split in two and she says oh same for you doll this just won't do and takes a big bunny bite and sucks this like li glowing life out of it and she lays it down back into uh, its case where it belongs um, you also uh, you're all wearing like winter wear right and you begin to feel warm um, like you like you start to feel a sweat break out um, and and things just in general you're like oh god wow it's getting a little humid in here isn't it? like it's kind of muggy um, and as uh, the the bunny uh, like resumes its strangely normal shape and size uh, as this like it would seem like a bunny mascot from a, a theme park um, it begins <laughs> it it, uh, it it stands and says oh geez thank you Medusa I just I can't can't thank you enough this winter has been horrible babe. How do you even get in there? I mean, we got we got other stuff we gotta handle first. This guy's kids is missing. We gotta we gotta go find his kids. He, they're trapped down here with you. We so. don't mess with kids, not at Easter. And so the bunny, <laughs> there is a, a there is a like a a a, a mascot sized bunny bounding towards you, Damon. Every time I think I start, you know. Understanding things that don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, Best to uh, just yeah, move out of her way. Dream, I know it. <laughs> he, it, it. <laughs> so the bunny uh, bounds up to you and says, Damon, uh, I promise you're going to see something very special this weekend. You've been such a good boy. I know this ain't Christmas, but it's kind of the same thing. You understand. It's a weird holiday. And so she, like, pushes you out of the way, and she's like, now let's go get your kids. And she, like, uses both of her feet kangaroo style and just, like, kicks these doors open um, that normally would probably have busted off the hinges, but magically are just boom like slam open and all of that force just echoes into the room beyond um uh inside is uh, a cage um a small uh egg-shaped cage uh inside this egg-shaped cage are your two children um they are they're they're weeping they're they're you know daddy i'm so sorry daddy please um they're they're hanging in this this metal egg 
um, from a chain in the middle of the room um, over a uh, what seems like a bowl, I suppose, uh, below them. This stone table that has this, a slight divot to it. Um, around the table are uh, different seats and, and different like reading materials and desks and things like that. Um, and it seems like they have been like put on like study or display or something here. Um, can you roll me a perception check? I think everybody can roll this at this point. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, apparently they made it more obvious than I thought. Uh, across one of the the surfaces where people would lay papers or scrolls to study or write, um, the the paper that's been pinned back has just had a knife <laughs> stuck into it and scratched into the words um, "burn snakes." Um, at that time, Medusa, you get uh, a call on your phone um, that you step away to take. Um, law. Whoever this is. Whoever this is, bad timing. <laughs> um, Damon, you know, uh, let's get your kids, right? Yes. Hold on there, kids. We'll get you out. Um, the locks are not incredibly hard. They're, they're simple locks. The keys are nearby, things like that. You're able to free them and, uh, and hold them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Some sense of normality here now. Calm down, you two. All right. Are you both okay? You heard? No, we're fine. No one hurt you, did they? I'm so scared. No, no, he said that, that you, he said that you'd come. He said, when we knew you would, but it was so scary. All right, calm down. Who, who I'm took you? My wild shape at this point. What did he look like? It was, uh, it was, the, the girl, like, kind of blushes, even though she's crying. She's like, he was handsome, daddy. Um... But he was really scary, and um, he he wore a weird white shirt, um, like a dress shirt dress, um, and he had blonde hair, and um, he. he uh, you have like pale ivory skin. Yeah, yeah, really pretty hands. Yeah. Thank you. And then the, the other one goes, oh, you know, Dad, have you ever seen, uh, you know, you we we watched it that one time probably because you're my dad. Um, you remember Hercules? Yeah, of course. They kind of dressed. The other night. He dressed like that. He dressed like a Hercules. He was real kinda, mad about the snakes. I don't know. Kind of turns back and looks to the others. Does this make any sense to any of you? You seem more accustomed to these kind of things. Medusa. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, guys. Sorry. Sounds like it could be something from my area that I might know about. Or even mine. Mm -hmm. um. That's annoying. Yeah, as you look back asking for some answers here, um, Medusa takes a, a phone call. And it is one of uh, the Gorgons that works for you, one of your Gorgon sisters. And she says, Medusa, I, I don't know who did it, but they burned it down. The gem's gone. The gem's gone. They burnt it down. I, I don't know... <laughs> They want us dead. They want us all dead. I was lucky to make it out. There's only one other girl. I can't. I just did. And she like breaks down um, into crying, uh, telling you that your gym, your home, your kind of safe haven um, is now up in flames. And no one else made it out. It's just you. 
Me and oh, just me and one other girl. Just me and one other. Okay. You know where to go. Go and stay stay quiet, stay safe. I'll come get you when it's safe. Yeah. Don't talk to anyone. No. And you and the phone hangs up. Like not even a word gets out and the phone hangs up after you say don't talk to anyone. She takes that that, you know, very literally. Um and that's where we're gonna call it for tonight. Um <laughs> we will we'll join episode three and find out what's going on uh with Medusa's club and or Medusa's uh gym and and all of that. Uh Woo! Wow. <laughs> Stopping it on a spicy moment. <laughs> It's been a, Some guy been just a, burned down my my gym. Big <laughs> session. Um, <sighs> yeah. Well, thank you guys for for hanging out today. I, I hope you had a great time. Yeah, thank you for the invite. Um, this is amazing. Yeah, thanks for the yeah, man. We'll we'll definitely it's you know really I the, these are one shots, but it doesn't mean that I want your character to go away forever. Uh, I definitely expect some other invites at some point. We'll bring you back in, and I'll put those kids in more trouble. Law, you know. <laughs> um, I was hoping for a phone know call. So I'll be like, I don't know who you are. <laughs> oh man, I was sitting here this morning, work. and I was like, I'm just gonna duct tape some gun to his hands in the second half. <laughs> I want to be someone who hasn't played anymore. five years. You did great. Yeah, Merc, you, <laughs> you. you jumped right yeah. in. No problem. Yeah, it was such a good episode. Thank you guys so much. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a few minutes and shout out to the the stream. But first, let's close out and tell everybody a little about yourself, where they can find you. Plug yourself. You did great. Uh, I mean, you can find me probably primarily on twitch.tv backslash the law give our G I V A R because it's more fun to spell things wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah, stream. That's the main thing I do. I yell at some screams. I play games. That's where you can find me or Nook's chat. <laughs> uh, all right. Beggar. Thank you for playing buddy. Uh, please tell people. Or... It was yeah, really absolutely. fun. Yeah. And, uh, fun. Great session, great people. It was really good. Thank you so much. And you can find me at uh, twitch.tv, the crazy beggar. I just do variety stuff, and that's pretty much it. Right on. Snips. What you got to say for yourself? Okay. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at Sketch It Snips. I post all of my illustrations and some of the progress on projects I'm working on. All right. And Merc. Thanks for playing, Merc. You're welcome. <laughs> I can't believe how good I did, but hey, <laughs> I guess I know how to do it. Um, <laughs> you can find me hanging out in this chat, because, well, I'm a mod. Um, <laughs> and then, I, like I said, just hiding around in Discord. Um, I do have, like, Twitter and Instagram and TikTok, which is at Mercadia Gin, but if you want to follow me, cool. If not, don't matter i don't post much anyway but i try <laughs> right on um thanks again everybody this has been super fun um i don't know what i was nervous about coming into it you know everybody did great um everybody on twitch you did great and in chat thank you um seriously holy crap there's been raids and subs and all kinds of stuff today follows thanks everybody for coming in and hanging out and being with us and supporting us and supporting the show supporting the channel go support these guys all of them um and uh see you in episode three yep and tully sorry about your shop yeah we kind of blew it up <laughs>